Okay, so our chicken is cooked. We'll go ahead and quick release. It smells delicious. So when um, you do some of your other recipes, a lot of the like oatmeals and those type of things, you're only going to pressure cook for just, you know, a couple minutes, but then you do allow them to do the natural release. So they're going to natural release for 20 to 40 minutes. Um, so that's part of the cooking process. And if you do cakes or cheesecakes, um, lots of your sweet things in there, a lot of them call for the natural release so that you're not shocking kind of that system and it allows it to finish cooking um, there. I do a lot of quick release because, again, I'm doing um, kind of the fast. I want them, I want to take it from frozen to cooked and on the table in half an hour tops. So we've released. And as you can see, we have delicious chicken ready to go. Whoa, getting steamed up. So with that, we're just going to pull it out into our bowl and we're just gonna shred it. And it is super tender. As you can see, it's very much fork shredding. Um, so at this point, you can kind of decide if you wanna go really shredded, chunky shredded, um, if you wanna cook it, or not cook it, cube it. It's cooked. Um, from there, So just super easy. This smells really, really good. And again, these were really fat chicken breasts, so you probably could have gone another minute or so. Um. And like cooking everything else, your food thermometer comes into play. Um, I use it a lot when I'm using my Instapot just so I know that I'm cooking everything to the proper temperature. We're kind of like our fat baked potatoes. It's, I mean, they're shredding. Oh, yeah. So with that, um, I... The recipe calls to just discard all of your liquid. Um, what I do, is, I'm gonna pop that in there for this minute in time, is I am going to just reserve that liquid in my measuring cup. Because I have learned um, that I kind of like to add some of that liquid back to my chicken. Um, just because you get a little extra moisture. And when we freeze the chicken, we've learned once we've shredded it, um, that if we put some of that liquid back into it, um, when it thaws or heats back up, it's so much juicier than if we just put it in just dry. So that's something we have learned, and I really prefer to do it that way. And even with the cracked chicken, Um, I tend to add some of that liquid back in just because I want it nice and moist and juicy. 
So with that, and it'll, we can kind of continue to shred it as we get everything in here. So to that, we're going to add eight ounces of cream cheese. And it is on, just get warm, or stay warm, keep warm, whatever the button says, so that we're keeping the kettle, or the inner pot nice and warm. So that helps melt our cream cheese faster. And then we're gonna add in eight ounces of cheddar cheese. And it never fails. Tear the little Terry thing and get the one that's not. And then we're just going to stir this until everything melts together with the nice warm hot chicken and the pan being warm and still on get warm. It usually doesn't take very much for this. Um, this is generally where I add a little bit of this liquid back in. The recipe calls does not call um, to add in the juice, and it calls for a little bit of hot sauce. We don't, I don't add the hot sauce in. Um, I think it's got a really good flavor, and it's what our family enjoys this way. And as you can see, it takes just very little time for everything to start melting and incorporating. So we eat this, serve it on a hamburger bun, on a good roll. Um, Trent loves to take it um, in his lunch with tortillas. And he eats it hot or cold. He also takes it and eats it like on corn chips as a dip. I mean, basically like chicken nacho dip stuff. Um, so this is definitely a huge hit with him for lunch which is fantastic because it makes perfect for a supper and then a day or two of lunches for him, which is fantastic. So look at all that good, gooey, cheesy goodness going on. And this is one, um, had we not added the spices when we cooked it, um, you would definitely add them now. I like to add them when I'm cooking it. Um, we've just discovered it really makes the chicken have that really nice ranch flavor from the get-go. Um, but if you were going to do three or four meals worth of, you know, and maybe didn't want all of your chicken ranch, you can definitely add it at this stage and it tastes really good too. So with that, 